Good morning, guys. This morning, we're gonna be working on my Ford F-250. Uh, noticed that it was leaking a little bit of oil and it turns out that it has a broken transmission cooling line. So, while I was gathering parts, seeing what I need, um, one of the lines is broken, but I'm gonna replace both. I had a bucket just grabbing on whatever was dripping, whatever oil was dripping. So far it's been, it has that much from sitting a couple of days. Luckily it happened here in my yard, so no damage was caused to the transmission because it was just a little bit of oil that came out. It was on the driveway and I noticed it. But, let the um the fittings soak they're all rusted let the fittings soak with bb blaster because they're all rusty and nasty so there's two lines that one is the one that's broken right there where it's nice and rusty and wet and um if you're doing this job I recommend you go to the dealer for these parts because you gotta get the right lines. For some reason online, it show one, then the other ones, the other one, it's, so this one, it's actually one part and then it turns into, well, it, it doesn't turn into, it, it comes out like this, a steel, and then it has one part that is hose that goes towards the front and it comes back as a hose and connects back again to the line. Another steel line that goes back to the transmission. So this one, the one on the driver's side, it's like a four part, four sections. So you gotta buy four sections of hose. Um, the other one, it's a one complete, one complete hose or line, which is this one, and it, no, this one, this one, the rusty one, which is the one on the passenger side. It connects right there, so they both connect to the bottom of the radiator, and this one turns into hydraulic hose, right, and it goes back to the transmission. One section is hydraulic hose and it turns into steel and it goes back to the tranny. While the other one, which is this one that I was talking about earlier, there's the hose part right there. And that goes towards the front over here somewhere. So there's a cooler. And from the cooler back out as a hose. And then the hose connects to a, a line, a pipe like this, and it goes back to the tranny. So I didn't know that part. By going to the dealership and talking to the guys and I figure it out. So this is basically the picture of the parts. Here's the two lines connected to the transmission. There's the tranny. The two lines. And as you can see, one, this one right here, that's the number. It, it's, it continues turns into a hydraulic hose <clears throat> and then it goes down and over so it goes down and over to the connection so the connection right here and then you got the other one which is the one well, one of these and it stops here and from there on there's nothing else connected to it, right? And that's because this section right here, these are the hoses that go into the cooler and back out to the cooler. I mean, goes into the cooler, comes out of the cooler, and then turns into a pipe, and it goes underneath the radiator. And here's the cooler in the front, and there's the two um, hoses, which these two hoses. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the steel lines, not these hoses, hopefully. But if I have to do these hoses, then I will. 
but right now I'm just gonna replace the rusty lines because I didn't get those hoses but and there's more work so I don't know if I want to get involved on doing that today we're just going in the front somehow and I'm bolting this I don't know if the bumper has to come out or I can do it without it without removing the bumper so here in Connecticut this is what the dealership charged me for all the pipes the hydraulic uh, pipes these, these guys that's the really long one that connects to the hose the one that I was talking about that is different that uses the two the two hoses to go into the cooler Here's the one that is complete with the hydraulic line section that I was talking about. And this one and this one are supposed to connect to these hoses. And that's how they work. So I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of if you're doing it, this is, this is how, how it's set up. I uh, recommend for you to go to the dealership. If not, now you got some information. Um, some information so you can look it up online so this long one is going to connect to a hose there's the information in case you want to take a screenshot of the part number then um a small one that goes with that one that connects to a hose There's the part number if you want to take another screenshot on there. And then the one that is complete. That has the hydraulic line connected to it. Give you the part number right now. And there it is. So you can take a screenshot of that. Maybe you can get them online and that way you know you're getting the right part. Once right, we get to the dealership, I really show you that this is what you could end up paying like I did. All right, now let's get to it. Let's get to work. So I'm not gonna really show you exactly how I'm doing, it's just removing and and replace him, but I can show you what kind of tool mines require. So I noticed that they could be metric, but you know, I think one this one uses, and I already released it. I already um, broke it loose the other day. This one uses a 5 8 fitting, that's the one on the passenger side. One on the driver's side, for some reason, I don't know if this got replaced before, but it's not using the same size wrench. Um, I got a AutoZone wrench, a metric, and it almost seems like it's 18. It's the only one that fits right on there. This 19 was too big. I'm gonna go with that. I recommend I recommend you use a line wrench. Don't use a regular wrench because they're pretty tight and they could strip and then you have all kinds of problem. And put another wrench on this fitting. What size is that, you ask? <laughs> Good question. Because I think it's 22 millimeter. I got a 24 and it's a little too big. But you can use an adjustable wrench on there. Or even a pipe wrench. Whatever you got just to hold it in place. Because if you try to turn this one this is going to want to turn to or you can use a channel locks to hold it because remember you're just holding it so 18 millimeter or um for this one in my case and 5 8 for that one that's what that's what's working for me right now um and i'm going to remove them from here and i'm going to remove the section of the hose off and then i'm gonna go back to the transmission 
they're on the passenger side of the tranny but i can record that when i'm there and then remove them and install them that's what i'm going to be doing and oil as far as oil you know how i was looking up online this is a what what is called four four r 100 transmission and it takes the dextron dextron 5 i think it is called so make sure you put the right oil too on these transmission look it up online i think if i'm not mistaken it's dextron 5 make sure you put the right, right amount of oil in the truck so you don't ruin your transmission and at this case maybe removing whatever is in the pan and doing a transmission oil change won't hurt Yep, so I got I got them loose. This is the one on the drive on the driver's side. Make sure you got that bucket, that container to grab some of the oil that's gonna fall out. Just remember the line is full of oil plus the cooler. I mean, yeah, the, the cooler inside the radiator. Whatever it's got in there is gonna come out, so you don't wanna make a mess. And that's the product I use for soaking them pb blaster pb blaster it works pretty good i recommend it and like i said guys in my case 18 18 millimeter 18 millimeter on one side and for some reason five eights on the other but this, this one could be metric could be could also be metric what is five eights maybe 17 millimeter 16 millimeter Five eights. <coughs> I think it's 17 millimeter. But use line wrenches. And use something like this to hold it or an adjustable to hold the fitting on the radiator. Alright fellas, I got the piece of line that goes from the hoses to the driver's side. And here's the hose. There's the hose. It comes out pretty easy, guys. If you have a hook, I recommend you to use a hook like this or a small screwdriver and work it in the hose, in between the hose and the fitting. Work it to unstick it from the line. Obviously, you have to release the hose clamp first, spring style, and you can use a needle nose for that. Like this, squeeze it and get it out of the way so this is our tools you're gonna need something like this a hook or a sharp object like this or even a small flat screwdriver will work but you got to work it try not to hurt the hose if you're going to reuse it keep that in mind and if your truck is rusty like mine i also recommend you using safety glasses because everything starts coming down on you when you're working out here my next step is to unclip this. I think I gotta use a screwdriver or something and stick it in here and pop it open. I'll show you. Show you when I do it. All right, guys. So I popped that clip out. It's easy. So you can see, see where it goes in and it latches on. All you gotta do is pry that this piece out. And it opens and it comes right out and as you can see it only has one line running through it so that means that the new line has to run through here because it was over here out somewhere because that line got replaced before and that's why it was a different fitting because it was an aftermarket so i'm going to run mine through here and obviously this one's going to run through there with a new one but yeah so if you have that situation understand that both lines run through this clip so that way they're out of the way and protect it. See what happened? Because I bet you the other the other one didn't reach in there because when it's aftermarket they don't they, they don't fit correct. Alright. Moving on. Alright guys. Got the other section of hose right there that gets connected to the long pipe that goes to the tranny now. And that's working on 
on the driver side one that's already connected and route it correctly to the hose and then the other hose section which is that one goes to the line that go there's a long line that goes all the way to the back but i have to remove that one which is right there is it where is it where is it kind of hard to see but those the two lines are right there and they go all the way back back to the tranny through on the side of the engine and it has that clip you see that clip right there you have to unclip it from there that clip right there now yeah, there's the hose there's the line there's the hose and there's the pipe line and obviously the other one, which is this one, that doesn't have any, it's one complete section. You know, you can actually cut it, cut them, to remove them. If you're not gonna reuse them, obviously just cut them. Make the job easier probably to remove them. And you can bend them however you want. But the new ones are the ones you're gonna be careful with. And I would recommend when piping them through, Maybe from the back towards the front. Maybe um, tape the ends so nothing gets in there. You never know. You don't want to run fucking rust or dirt in your new lines. All right, fellas, I'm in the back now. I'm on, under the truck, on the side, passenger side of the transmission. There's... One of the cooling lines, the one further back. Again, same same wrench, which is either the 5.8 or the 16 millimeter um, line wrench. I pre-soaked these, these, so they're definitely coming out easy, so I recommend you to do the same. Um, and always have a container because you're, <laughs> you're just gonna make a mess. Take your time, especially if you're doing it on the driveway, on a, on a nice floor or something. You don't want to get the nice floor messed up. At the other one, that's way over here in the front of the tranny somewhere. Is it? Okay, so there's one. And there's the second one. This is the really long one. The one that goes all the way to the back. And then I think they have a clip right there. And then they go to the engine, on the side of the engine. Pretty simple. As long as the fittings come out pretty simple it's not a hard job at all and you have to have the tools in the containers and the right parts to do it pretty simple guys all right guys the clip that was there hold them both um all you gotta do is reach up on it and with your hands you can remove it. it's just a little clip like this there's nothing to it just to keep them organized and together you just pop it, pop it right out with your hands. You can use a hook or a tool, but I did it with my hands. Not a big deal. Make sure you put it back though. Put it somewhere where you can find it. Don't lose it like I'm always about to do. So I'm just gonna put it right here. I remember that it's there and it goes right in that section. All right guys, so now that the hose or well, the pipe is removed from there and it drain pretty much everything. I'm just gonna pull it. Still leaking a little bit. But um, what you gotta do is pull it. Pull it, work it. Remember it's bend, it has bends in it and just gonna pull it from the engine. Just pull it and it comes right out. And that's how you're gonna feed the new one. That's it. She's out. 
Same thing with the other one. So as I'm trying to remove the other one because it has that extra, all this extra bands and stuff, you gotta work it. I think I'm gonna pull it towards me, towards the front. See what happened. See if it's, it makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense, but because working all this through the through the back it might be challenging. And again, pulling it towards the front might also be challenging because it doesn't make sense. And again, you can bend it a little bit. Let me see if it goes towards the back. I just want to make sure that I give you the right information. Let me try, guys. All right, fellas. So pulling it towards the back is not going to work with this one because no matter what I do, I just can't get it through there because of all these bends. Now, yeah, I can cut it and, and it'll be easier. But remember, the new one comes like this. So I'm trying, trying to figure out what's the best way. So I think once you have it over here, because remember it goes, it goes here. So bring it around all these hoses, bring it over here towards the front of the engine. And I think at this point, it would be easier to pull towards the front. Yeah, you're gonna bend it a little bit. But I'd rather bend it a little bit. And not damaging it. And you should be able to remove it towards the front of the engine. So far, that's how it's coming out. I'm gonna go in the back, make sure I'm not getting hung up on anything. Because I know the starter is there and I'm afraid that this thing's gonna touch power and short something out so we go look all right guys so the the hose the fitting I'm glad i caught it because yeah it was stuck right here in the starter but i wiggled it and pushed it through here to this cross beam and i think i'm going to be able to pull it right out able to pull it right on. There it goes, there it goes. There it goes, see? There you go. So now I know that that's where it goes in. So it came right out, guys. I bent it just a little bit here and there, but it's not major in any way. So right from the front, center of the truck and the side of the engine that's where the other one's gonna go through I'm gonna tape the ends I don't want nothing to go in there I'm just gonna shove it through but yeah it's doable it's not a big deal it's a little challenging but there it is <laughs> alright guys I know I got lucky removing the the old line and it hit the starter. I don't wanna get, I don't know, I don't wanna try my luck again. Just in case, I'm gonna disconnect the negative on my battery. If you got the original connections, it's gonna be eight millimeter. Make sure you disconnect them and pull them to the side where it's not gonna to touch the terminal. And the line is going in, it's ready. I taped the ends. I don't want to get dirt in, in the new one. And like I said, guys, I didn't bend it much. I ended up tweaking it, but um, it looks pretty much the same. So you don't have to force it that much. So, so you know, I'm gonna stick this side in first. Like I said, right in the center where it goes and work it in take your time have patience if you get frustrated walk away from it go get a drink of water go drink some coffee walk away from it it's not that hard but you don't want to bend it and kink it in any way or damage anything in the process all right guys let's get it 
all right so this is how you want it this is how it's going in for me with the fitting sticking down towards the cross member in that position i'm gonna slowly push it in and going in just work it in all the way through now right and it's touching right here uh, yeah, she, fell, she fell in and she's hitting something now i gotta see what what's going on the other end that i can continue oh no i can continue for it it's hitting now might be hitting the starter might not oh there it goes move it that way and i can see the fitting on the other side you see it See it over there. So I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna get it over the that bar right there. Gotta, be, gotta get it twisted. Ah, nope, I did it. All right. I'm gonna go in the back. See how we doing and continue. Pulling it and pushing it little by little, she's going, she's going right in. Here's the other new one. I already taped the ends so that way we don't have a problem there either. Just over here. I'm glad we came to check because she's actually in the wrong spot. She has to be on the other side of that exhaust pipe. Has to be on this side. Let me fix that real quick. All right, guys, I adjusted the, the line from the other side of the pipe. And there she is. I connected it to the transmission. And she's all the way towards the front. I'm gonna go in the front and adjusted it because I so I ended up getting it it was you know it was on the other side of this pipe so I adjusted it and then went in the front adjusted it in the front and it came back um, she's in so I'm gonna show you what I got in the drag this cardboard I got you know, I got another piece of cardboard, but I keep on using the same one. I can have two. <laughs> All right, so yeah. So I adjusted it to where it was in line with the clip. And on the other side of these two hoses, coming around the bottom, and she is practically ready to get installed right there. And go on the clip that holds it right in place right there. So you have it guys it's easy this is the most challenging one and you saw me doing it without lifting the engine or doing some crazy bend or anything i didn't have to bend this one at all i just work it I just work it in there follow my instructions and you should be able to do it just like me i'm gonna connect take the tape off connect it right here put on the clip and then work on the other one the easy one guys another tip Make sure you put them in by finger first, by hand. Don't cross thread them with, your, with a wrench. Put in the wrench on too early. Make sure they're in by hand. Okay, and they're lined up. This one was giving me a hard time and it reminded me, reminded me of that. Because <laughs> I wanted to put the wrench on it and you can end up messing things up like that. So by hand, make sure they screw it in by hand, nice and straight. Again, if it frustrates you, take a break. I know that one is in by hand. I should be able to put the wrench on it now. It's sitting where it needs to be sitting. All right, now I'm working on the long, easy pipe. I'm sticking it right, right through there. Now it's gonna go in the tight spot where the engine is. 
I'm gonna work it nice and easy. Yeah, that one goes right in, no problem. No problem. Sitting right about where I need it. I'm gonna remove the tape and screw it onto there. And then once I secure the front, I'm gonna come back and put that clip on there. Remember the clip? All right. So I'm in the front and make sure that they're both in the clip. And I put the hose back on. Where is it? Where are you? Oh, I know. Right there. Put the clamp back on, the hose. Now I'm gonna go in the back and tighten up all the fitting. Both fittings of the two lines. Because now everything is in place. Now I can make everything nice and tight. This is tight. This is tight. Put the clip on the back. And we should be good to go as far as the installation goes. I tell you guys, my truck, it's an old truck. It's an old four. It's rusty. I, I don't use it every day. It's not my daily. I only use it for whenever I got to... Whenever I need a pickup, whenever I need to transport something. So, you know, maybe you're thinking, why am I replacing, doing all this work? When I could have maybe repair the line, I don't know, do it in a cheaper way, but I'd rather not. These are big vehicles and you're on the road, you're sharing the road with other people who are who knows with their families and the last thing you want is to have an accident or a fire or something that can cause damage to you or somebody else and or make a mess you imagine making a mess on the highway or or the street all because you're just being negligent negligent you know because you're not taking care of what you're supposed to take care of so think about that think about that kind of stuff yeah it's a little bit more money but Gotta do the right thing. I sleep better at night. I think about all the people on the road all the time, man. Because I see so many accidents. And all because people don't care. You know, at, at my age, I've been through a lot. And um, you humble a lot. You end up humbling and understanding you got to think of others that you don't know at all and that you got to be responsible for your actions if you learn that when you're young it's even better but sometimes you're young and ignorant and you think you know it all so if you're listening to this and you're a young kid think about what i'm saying humble up still be a man you can still be a man be humble you can still be strong you can still be an alpha and be humble you don't have to be an asshole just because you're a man be reckless because you're a man it doesn't work that way anyway rambling on let me put the clip on and that's gonna be the last part, guys. I need two hands. All right, fellas. All I gotta do now is put the battery back on, connect the negative battery, negative connection back on, and add the fluid that I lost. I don't know. It looks like about a gallon, maybe more. Who knows? I got a gallon of transmission fluid. Remember, these are transmission four R one hundreds, and they used uh, what is it, Dextron? Five, something like that make sure you get the right oil and i hope this video helped you guys if this video helped you please like subscribe it's free um have any questions please let me know have any comments let me know what you would have done different hopefully this video helps you you learn something from it look at that nice little bunny <laughs> all right enjoy the rest of your day guys have a blessed day